folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, doing a new movie review this week. And yeah, I just wasted 93 minutes of my entire life because I just watched Escape Plan 2 Hades. As you may know, it's a sequel to the original Escape Plan with Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger teaming up in a prison movie, which led an all-star cast, such as Vincent D'Onofrio, Amy Ryan, Jim Cavazell, Sam Neill, Vinnie Jones, and even 50 Cent. Yes, Curtis Jackson, which I'm not a big fan of, which I'm going to definitely say it. You know, he's... <laughs> He's a dim-witted rapper with grills. But doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> it seems to be. And I was never a big fan of him. Anymore. Especially since he just made fun of someone with autism a long time ago. <sighs> yeah, what a dick. Well, Escape Plan is not as good as... Stallone's other prison film called Lock Up, which I actually did love, by the way. It's actually a very good film. Definitely one of Stallone's best performances back in the 80s. That along with Over the Top and Rambo and Rocky. Yes. Even the Cliffhanger and Demolition Man come to mind. Yeah, those are good movies. Hey, I even enjoy uh, the specialists and assassins too. <laughs> yeah, and even uh, Copland, which was also his best performance. I mean, Stallone's a great actor. He always was. But it's just sad that he's just taking paycheck after paycheck with this kind of shit. But. This time, it's a direct-to-video sequel. Well, in the States, that is. It's direct-to-video. But it was released theatrically in China. Because that's where the big bucks go. Not a hit. Only made $14.1 million out of its $20 million budget. But they're going to make a third film anyway. This is an all-time low for Sylvester Stallone because, yeah, he has his bad films too, but I have to say, this might be his worst film since, in fact, it might as well be his worst film since Rhinestone. In fact, I'd rather listen to uh, Stallone's performing the country music badly than having to see this film again. I mean, he just looks so miserable as Ray Breslin. At least he was good in the first movie, unlike this one that I'm just reviewing right now. I mean, sure, I mean, the first movie may have its issues, but it still was a decent film. It was definitely worth watching. So, I actually didn't mind it. In fact, I like it better than this that I'm reviewing right now. Well, anyway. Apparently, Stallone was going to do a film with Jackie Chan, but he refused and wound up having the John Cena to join in instead. So I don't know how that film's going to turn out now. He's already doing the, the upcoming Creed sequel, which... Interesting enough, uh, Dolph Lundgren's going to reprise his role as Ivan Draco from Rocky IV. But that's certainly the case. I mean, it's it's just them in training to as coaches to actually um, you know, coach Creed and and a young boxer that they're going to join. Well, whatever. <laughs> I mean, I didn't mind Creed. I mean, it was... it was okay. 
not as good as uh, all the other Rocky movies, but it is a spin-off. That's all that matters. I mean, at least Michael B. Jordan was a lot better compared to what he was in Fan Force Stick. Um, or whatever. Anyway. This one just blew my mind. They got Dave Bastista in this one, you know, from Guardians of the Galaxy. And he's, of course, a wrestler for the WWE. And he's underused. It's sad because uh, he might be one of the good ones in, in this one. As opposed to uh, Jaime Kane or maybe a sub of the supporting cast. But the real star of the film turns out to be a Chinese actor named Hong Zhaomin. And he does all these... Uh, he does all these um, Kung Fu moves that he does. But even he wasn't that interesting. Uh, well, anyway, I'm going to review the film right now. It stars Sylvester Stallone, Dave Bastista, Hong Zamin, Johnny Kane, Curtis Jackson, aka 50 Cent, Jesse Metcalf, Wes Chatham, Titus Welber, Shea Buckner, Lydia Hall, Chantaine, Taiwan Ruli, and Pete Wentz. It's written by Miles Chapman and it's directed by Stephen C. Miller. Yeah, for those who don't know, he's responsible for the remake of Silent Night, Deadly Night. He also did a film called Arsenal. Yeah, with Nicolas Cage and John Cusack. Yeah, First Kill with Bruce Willis and Hayden Christensen. And don't forget Extraction with Bruce Willis and... Kellen Lutz, who's one of the worst actors ever. He's a shitty director. That's all I'm, I can say. <laughs> the movie began sometime after he escaped the tomb, which is the prison ship in the original escape plan. Ray Breslin had now started his own security company with a computer hacker, Hush, and Abigail being served as his senior staff members. He recruited uh, Sho Ren along with Jasper, Kimbrough, and Luke as field operatives. During the Hasha's rescue mission in Chekna, Kimbrough breaks the unity by, with the team by relying on a computer algorithm. Yes, I got the name algorithm right. Yeah, because I had trouble saying the name when I was doing a video on going on a new site called me, which is now defunct, you know, just so I can save all these videos that I posted on YouTube, see how that goes, you know, you know how that is. Uh, thanks to my friend Quinn, I mean, he corrected me on that. Nobody's perfect. I mean, I, I had trouble with names. Anyway, he did use the computer algorithm to complete the mission, but it causes a complication that results in a female hostage, which she got shot during a gunfire. But due to the botched outcome of the rescue mission, he got fired from the team. So a year later, Sho had been requested by his family cousin to protect the satellite businessman cousin, Yoshane, from technology giant Rushow. Rushow made free attempts to buy out uh, Yoshane's technology, only to be rebuffed. At his party in Bangkok, Thailand, a bunch of masked men yeah, one of those Chinese masks that they wore. Kind of like the ones you saw in those uh, Chinese New Year's or something. I mean, they're not kabuki masks, but... But close. But they kidnapped Xiao Shane, and Xu decided to beat them up with his fighting skills, because he's, he's very good at it. But they shot him with electronic uh, guns, knocking him unconscious. When he woke up, he finds himself in a prison at a sanctuary known as the Zoo that's run by a zookeeper named Gregor Foss. 
which apparently it turns out to be a prison known as Hades, which actually stands for High Assist Detention Service. It was actually built by using technology known as Galileo. And apparently, <laughs> apparently it had those crud looking robots. They look almost like tiny Robocops here. I mean, with the visor and everything. Looks pretty bad. Then they had those um, holographic rooms, such as the, the art room, where he just spends time, you know, drawing and and painting some art for with all the rest of the prisoners around. Yeah. Then they have like the entire room that's like a giant metro dome of for UFC f fighters out there. But this is different, basically. I mean, you just get all these prisoners going around, you know, battling each other. You actually hear a computer voice contacting and telling them what to do. You know, so on and so forth. So, the show's plan, you know, under the narration of uh, Breslin, because he actually told them what to do, you know, when you get trapped in prison, is actually use all the skills by using plan A or plan B or even plan C for that matter, but at this rate, plan B. <laughs> so he has to draw like a map of what the, the escape plan should look like. So they'll try to find a way to escape all the way up to the top of the roof. So he has to draw every single plan to see how this will work. So he, he offers to tell all the prisoners out there to see if they can try to find a way. You know, just sending out some messages and everything. You know, even though you know, they're being told to, to have a battle with each other. Yeah, that goes a long way. But meanwhile, uh, Breslin meets um, Trent uh, De Rosa, you know, who's a former associate of his security. You know, they meet up in, at, at a bar, and, and which actually leads to this because suddenly, you know, one of the, um, the operatives suddenly uh, sets, uh, sets them up as a revenge, so that's where you had all these... Uh, all these masked men coming around, you know, going after them. Yeah, so they shot them out. They, yeah, you know, all of them are dead, including those people who set them up. <sighs> Even with these corny dialogues that they give him, like for example, he says, "I guess it's back to be good," but Breslin says, "No, bad to be back." What is that? Whatever. Well, anyway, just as everything gets so complicated, uh, DeRosa had to continue trying to find uh, a hacker to see where he can find all these guns that he has laying around. I mean, DeRosa definitely knows how to, <laughs> to figure out the, the Rubik's Cube. So he wants to find out the names. He was actually running the the system in the prison. <sighs> There's going to be a spoiler, but I don't give a shit because the movie sucks. I already learned who the villain was. It was Breslin's former protege who wants to becoming the warden of Hades. Yep, Jasper. So he's the one that's running the system and doing exactly what they say. So this is where it leads to a bigger fight at the end where yeah, Ray Blessing winds up in Hades while Sho, along with Shaheen, had to escape along with the other prisoners. They even brought in the, yes, the team of uh, bald albino men known as the Legion because they, they basically say, we are Legion! They don't talk much, but they probably had said just a few words like, you know, they're not going to make it or anything. So, I mean, they're, they're actually in control because they're actually very good at, at computers and all the technology that they had to team up. So that way, you know, they'll be able to help all the prisoners out. But that leads to bigger problems when, when they get into 
a knife fight between Show and False, and all the other um, securities around are going after all the other prisoners, and they got killed. Even the the Legion team got killed as well. But um, but of course, you know, Show. Jai Jin and and even Breslin joins in, you know, along with with Luke, you know, trying to escape. But Shao Shane had to, you know, be able to put in the security codes, you know, t trying to open the, you know, the gates and and all of, and all the shafts and everything, even from the rooftops and all that, to get out of there. So they had to climb all the way up to the roof, which turned out to be the church. This is where we lead to a fight between the Breslin and, and Jasper. And what a fight that that turned out to be. <laughs> so all the way up to the end, um, Breslin, along with De Rosa, who just came in, actually shot all the the, the bad guys. Yeah, just in time and saved uh, Luke and now they're just getting ready for <laughs> a sequel bait ending which actually is going to happen anyway with escape plan free to find out who's responsible for this because you get you basically see like a holographic uh, executive uh, Oh, this was too much. <laughs> this is really bad. I mean, incredibly bad. Salone is just totally miserable as Ray Breslin. Bostista is totally underused. I mean, he's only there for just certain scenes of the film. As opposed to uh, Stallone. They're not the real stars of the film, basically. It turns out to be... Hong Zhaomin as show, and he's the only one that's in the movie throughout the entire running time. Uh, I mean, although granted, though, he is very good at doing all these uh, fighting skills, so. But he wasn't really that interesting, in, in my opinion. Uh, and same goes with the rest of the cast. I mean, they're just uninteresting. Boring, lame, forgettable. As I said before already, the robots look totally, totally crud. I mean, they look like tiny ro Robocops here with the visor and everything. The direction was really uh, horrific and poor pace, too. I mean, it's like the director doesn't even know how to handle the camera angles very well. I mean, I think that was probably f because of his cinematographer, Brendan Cox. Yeah, I mean, he couldn't handle the shots very well. The editing of the film was was incredibly poor. The CGI effects looks uh, totally cheap. It, 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 I mean, brightly cheap. I mean, it, it, it's so bright that it just makes my eyes bleed. The villain was very lame, incredibly. I mean, in comparison with uh, Jim Cassavell's uh, performance as Warden, this one's a piece of shit. I <laughs> mean, my God, I mean, I mean, Breslin can definitely beat the shit out of him really easy, too. I mean, yeah, the fight scenes were pretty laughable, too. It really was. Uh, Hush is just... Uh, I think he should hush himself for right. I mean, he doesn't have grills, but he does smile in a whole awkward way. Um, he's never a good actor. I mean... 
I guess the only good thing about the film, though, was the the synthesizer score that's done by the Newton Brothers. And that was a wonderful score that they was given for the film. I mean, the plot is just totally ludicrous. It really is. The writing is, is totally bad. Filled with all these uh, corny dialogues. And yes, it's hard to believe. Even Stallone himself said, I'm stupid. Yes, Stallone, you made a big mistake in your entire career by actually choosing to do a direct-to-video sequel like Escape Plan. <sighs> big mistake. Well, at least Bostista is getting better at, at one of his films these days. I mean, already with uh, the movie uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. But he's already going to do an upcoming film coming up, so it's good to see that. And, of course, he even... Got a small role in Blade Runner 2049. Which, interestingly enough, though, Stallone was also in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. So, this is basically their second time to be in the film. But, it's too bad, though, because I would have had loved Stallone and Bastista working together in a better action movie than this one. But that's really sad. And of course, Schwarzenegger didn't reprise his role. It's too good for this, granted. But hey, he did Killing Gunfer, a terrible movie. He also did Aftermath, too. Not very good either. So, what can he do? I guess it's just really sad the legendary action stars are just taking the, the direct-to-video routes. And I know Stallone had did that before in the past, but, you know, he, he made a comeback with Rocky Balboa in, in 2006. Even though, it, you know, he did have a bad film with uh, Spy Kids' free game over. But whatever. And yes, Escape Plan 2 is even worse than bullet to the head and grudge match come to mind but what can you do? <laughs> I mean this, since it's direct to video and it's already been sold in stores sooner or later this movie's gonna end up at Dollar Tree you probably have to end up getting this for a dollar <laughs> not worth it and that gets a shame because Dollar Tree does have some good titles if I can find some good titles you know, I'm not getting a good selection these days, but sometimes they do. <laughs> Whatever. But anyway, if you love Escape Plan, don't bother with this sequel. It's a piece of shit. And I had to take the risk to see the film anyway, because I know everyone else saw it. They hated it. And apparently, they're right. Even some of my friends who saw the movie hated it to death. Even if one of them didn't like uh, the original film to begin with, but that's okay. Uh, to me, as opposed to the other guy, or whatever, um, at least they liked the original film. Well, one of them did. And I didn't mind too. But this one could just go straight to hell. <laughs> and I just saw some worse films this year with uh, Blumhouse uh, True for Dare, uh, Fifty Shades Feces, with Dakota I Can't Act for Shit Johnson, which I can't believe she's going to be in the Suspiria remake. Yes, I saw the fucking trailer. It looks like fucking shit. Like, it looks so impressive. I'm sorry, but this is why the original is going to win. I haven't seen Unfriended Dark Web yet, and I already know that's going to be a, a shitty sequel. Because I hated the first movie. Never liked it to begin with. So I've yet to see that piece of shit. And I just saw Overboard, the remake with Eugenio Davis and 
Anna Ferris. And sad to say, even that film is better than this. I mean, mostly for Eugenio Davis's performance, but it's still a shitty remake. <sighs> I just don't want to talk about this movie anymore. In fact, avoid this film at all costs. Just stick to the original Escape Plan instead. So, I give Escape Plan 2 Hades zero fucking stars. What a waste of time that I had to sit through. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. I'll see you later, much later. Bye!